In this edition of the Parliament Report, harmonization limited to lose millions this year. More heat on Northwest Clarendon MP for market shops controversy. And another promise to deliver Tivoli Report. Harmonization Limited, the company which has been pursuing plans over the last decade to develop the Harmony Cove project in Trelawney, is set to lose $55 million this year. In addition, there are fears that the company's $3.5 billion equity in the project is at risk. Despite the projected losses, Finance and Planning Minister Dr. Peter Phillips says the government is pressing ahead with the world-class luxury resort to be constructed on Jamaica's north coast. Harmonization Limited is comprised of the Development Bank of Jamaica and the National Housing Trust. Opposition spokesman on tourism Edmund Bartlett on April 9 sought answers about the multi-billion dollar project, arguing that the investment partners did not put any significant capital injection into the venture. Bartlett and his colleague, Member of Parliament for South Trelawney, Marissa Darimper Philibert, asked Phillips to explain why the company was still paying salaries amounting to $20 million in local currency when the project appeared to have stalled. The Harmony Cove Resort, with hotels, a casino, private villas, entertainment facilities, a marina and golf course, is expected to take about 10 years to be completed. The first phase of the project, to cost the U.S. $800 million and expected to begin this year, was to take three years to complete. Responding to questions during the meeting of Parliament's Standing Finance Committee on April 9, Philip said the project was not dormant. He said the board and officials of Harmonization Limited are actively pursuing the project. Harmonization Limited signed a joint venture agreement with North American firm Tavistock in September 2006. The project was designed to influence the growth of the Jamaican tourism sector as well as generate economic multipliers, particularly in the areas of employment and enterprise creation. Local Government Minister Noel Arscott has admitted that Member of Parliament Richard Azan blundered when he became involved in the unauthorized construction and illegal rental of 10 shops at the Spaulding's Market in Clarendon. Bombarded with questions on the construction of the shop from opposition MPs led by West Kingston MP Desmond McKenzie during a meeting of Parliament's Standing Finance Committee, Arscott said the MP erred. Arscott declared, and I quote, an error was made and I must admit it. Under no condition can a member of parliament issue instructions to encroach on property owned by the state without due process. So I will admit that an error was made. End of quote. Azan, who is the member of parliament for Northwest Clarendon and state minister for transport works and housing, told the Sunday Gleaner that the idea for the shops came about during a discussion to remove the vendors from the roadside as the town of Spaulding's was congested. The local government minister told his parliamentary colleagues that the Clarendon Parish Council has since regularized the situation. The shops were constructed between September and December 2012. They were built by a private contractor on the premises of the market which is owned by the Clarendon Parish Council. Arscott said the proper arrangement should have been a public-private partnership. The West Kingston MP also wanted to know who collected the money for the rental of the shops. Arscott acknowledged that while the money was paid at the MP's constituency office, it was collected by an employee who was said to be an agent of the contractor. When Mackenzie asked if there was political interference, a chorus of objections came from the members on the government side. Fitz Jackson, MP for South St. Catherine, intervened, saying the line of questions from Mackenzie was outside the remit of the committee, adding that the standing orders only allowed queries in relation to the estimates before the House. And finally in the Parliament report, Speaker of the House of Representatives Michael Peart has again stated that the Public Defender's report into the 2010 Tivoli incursion will be tabled in Parliament before the end of April 2013. Responding to questions from Opposition Spokesman and Finance Audley Shaw during the Standing Finance Committee meeting on April 9, Peart gave the assurance that the report would be tabled. Peart had given a commitment in January that the report would have been submitted to his office in that month. But the public defender Earl Witter failed to submit the report, citing resource shortages at his office. 
The Houses of Parliament had allocated additional resources to assist in the completion of the report. And that's how we close this edition of the Parliament Report. Join us next time when we present more highlights from the House of Representatives on Duke Street in Kingston. Until then, I'm Edmund Campbell saying, what good?